Well, verse six, for to be carnally minded is death. To have an unrenewed mind is death. But to be spiritually minded, have a renewed mind, is life and peace. Because the carnal, unrenewed mind is enmity or hostile towards God, against God. Why? Why is it, how is it classified as hostile against God? Because it is not subject to the law of God. Do you hear that? So that means that to be carnally minded means that you're not subject to the law of God, which means when you're spiritually minded, guess what? You are subject to the law of God. Do you, do you see that? You say, I'm, I'm defending the law because so many people have preached against it just because they couldn't live up to it. And the reason they couldn't live up to it is because they didn't have the spirit of Christ because they weren't born again, but they were preaching anyway. So whenever you have the spirit of Christ, he empowers you. Grace empowers you to live in accordance with the law of God. Do you understand that? Okay. Now, notice he says, neither the, because the carnal mind, the unrenewed mind is hostile against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind has to cease to exist, and that means it has to be changed to a spiritually renewed mind, or a renewed mind, which is a spiritual mind, before it can be subject to the law of God. Right? Simple, right? Now, you say, okay, Curry, how does this affect me? I'm, I'm getting there, but you just have to know the spiritual and the biblical foundation, all right? Now, the literal Greek translation of Romans chapter 8, verse 5 is this, 5, 6, and 7, actually. For those who are habitually dominated by the sinful nature put their minds on the things of the sinful nature. But those who are habitually dominated by the Spirit put their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to have the mind dominated by the sinful nature is death, but to have the mind dominated by the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind dominated by the sinful nature is hostile toward God, for it does not marshal itself, that means arrange itself or align itself, under the command of the law of God, neither is it able to do so. Now, that's the literal Greek translation, right? You want to get back to what it actually says? That's what it says. Now, a while back, a young man, brilliant young man named Ben Shapiro, wrote a book called Facts Don't Care About Your Feelings. I have wished so many times I had thought of that title first. <laughs> that I would have called every book I ever wrote after that, that title, just even if it had nothing to do with that, just so people would know that facts have nothing to do with your feelings. Right? Now, to be carnally minded means to be preoccupied with what your five senses tell you about you, about your health, about your finances, about your situation, about your circumstances. Does that make sense? Now, I'll say that again. To be carnally minded means that you are preoccupied with what your five senses tell you about your health, your finances, your circumstances, and your situations. Right? So that's how to tell right there. What do you spend most of your time thinking about? If you spend most of your time thinking about something that you really learn more or less from your five senses, then more than, well, I, I want to say absolutely, uh, you are carnally minded, right? Now, it means, now listen carefully, it means that you let your body, your bank account, or let's say your TV, tell you what your condition is or is going to be. Now, let's just let that, and I'm, I know I'm kind of talking a little bit slower than normal. Why? Because I want these to soak in. I want you to get this. To be carnally minded means that you let your body, your bank account, your TV tell you what your condition is or is going to be. Do you hear that? If you align yourself, in other words, if you act on what your body or your bank account or your TV tells you how your condition is going to be, then you believe that, you're carnally minded, and you believe that more than you believe the Word of God. 
See, this is super simple. Well, super simple to lay out and say. A little bit different to actually do. It's still not hard to do. It's a decision, and you decide to do it or not. Most Christians never decide. They just, why? Because there's so much in the world that you can't tell them different from the world. And they talk about the world, and they talk about everything in the world, and they talk about every situation of the world, rather than what to do about it or what it's going to do or not do to you. Now, it means, okay, now let, let, let me say it this way. Whatever you let dictate your future, whatever you decide is the truth about your future, that is your God. If you let the news tell you how you're going to be suffering because of the economy, then the economy and the news is your God's. God has already said what your economy and your situation is going to be. He will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It's that simple. So you have to choose to believe one or the other. Now, if you believe, I'm not saying that Stuff ain't happening. I'm just saying, it doesn't have to happen to you. And you say, but it's already happening to me. Well, then you can turn it around. If you remember, okay, God is the same. He has not changed. Is that right? I am the Lord. I change not. That's what he said in Malachi. Is that right? Hebrews 13, 8 says the same thing, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen? Amen? So he hadn't changed. So the same God that protected the Israelites who were just across the river from the Egyptians can protect you. Is that right? Yes. If they can have the plagues and the children of God not be plagued, then God can do that today. Yep. Is that right? Yes. But you have to decide to allow the word of God to have entrance into your heart that brings light, that allows you to believe the light that changes your situations. Now, I have to get the CD myself and listen to that statement again, okay? Because I don't know if I could repeat it that way or not. But now, so whatever you let dictate your future or whatever you believe is going to dictate your future is your God. Now, 